Moving on from the Q&As to a recent development, the Securities and Exchange Board of India or SEBI has proposed to ease up norms for real estate investment trusts or REITs. And to break up the jargon for you now, what really is a REIT? Well, these are investment trusts that pool investors' money to buy real estate such as office buildings, shopping malls and rental housing. And why are they important? Simply because real estate industry in India is starved of the right priced funding and REITs have the potential to bring in several billions of dollars into this industry. But for our purpose, some changes proposed are even more critical. First being that SEBI has allowed REITs to invest a larger corpus in under construction assets. And this could come as good news for a few developers like Unitech who have commercial assets which can be bundled as REITs and the money received there could be used to complete their projects. We've got with us uh, here in the Delhi studio, Madhav Podda, tax partner EY. And also with us from the Mumbai studio, Arvindandan, South Asia Director, Valuation and Advisory, Colliers International. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. Madhav, first question to you. I mean... Out of all the changes proposed, which one is the most exciting one for the industry? Yeah, so there are about five or six changes which have been proposed and uh, two or three which are really relevant. One is SEBI permitting uh, more than, uh, SEBI permitting up to 20% in under construction assets mm -hmm. from the earlier 10%. And the second thing is SEBI allowing a holding company structure. So where REITs can invest in a holding company which then has SPVs below it. Right. Uh, what these two changes do basically uh, number one, they make it, they ensure that there's a quicker time to market uh, for companies because companies now don't need to do restructuring prior to launching a REIT. Uh, and number two, it changes the risk reward ratio a little bit because there's more under construction stock. So there's obviously a higher risk, mm -hmm. but then they can all, they, there will also be a higher return. Okay. Arvind, would you agree that these two are the most critical changes and it actually changes the risk reward uh, Ratio, because I mean, what I, the sense I was getting is that in the current form, before these changes, the best returns you could expect from REIT in the Indian circumstances would be eight and a half percent or nine percent at the max, and that was not mouthing mouthwatering enough or exciting enough for investors to get into it. No, I think I absolutely agree, um, and in that order, in fact, uh, upping it from ten to twenty percent will definitely have a very good impact on. Uh, Number one, getting in uh, uh, more funds and number two, uh, upping the reward system because you are getting into a riskier asset, which is obviously, you know, will have, will have been filtered uh, for its risk profile. But I think the return possibilities are higher. You know, even if you look, you know, Manisha, if we go slightly outside, if you look at the dividend yields in the, in the Singapore market on REITs, they are usually between six and a half to seven and a half percent, you know, and with a different kind, a kind of a, uh, an industry profile here. I think uh, seven, seven and a half percent, it's a wild guess right now, should not be a trouble here for the investors or anyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, seven and a half percent is not what any foreign investor would expect, uh, Madhav Podhar, because you also have a forex risk, isn't it? So I would assume that until unless uh, they can see some visibility of nine percent plus returns, it would be still a hard sell to investors. Yeah, it would really, one would really have to look at the kind of investors, Manisha, when you're talking about that, because if you're really looking at somebody who's betting long term on India, mm -hmm. uh, somebody like uh, sovereign wealth funds or pension funds, then the currency uh, fluctuation risk uh, kind of takes a little bit of a backseat. Okay, it does get minimized. So you're saying that anything, would you agree with Arvind then that anything in 7% plus, plus is, is actually a good return to, to attract foreign investors? Again, like Arvind, it would be a wild guess. guess anything below 7% would probably not be marketable at all. Anything above 7% is something that you could look at taking to investors and then it would really depend on the investor's cost of capital. <laughs> okay. You're hoping money will flow in from where the cost of capital is not more than 1% to 2% and there are several still markets there. Yes, okay. Uh, Arvind, just, 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 just explain to our viewers in terms of this under construction uh, you know, uh, limit which has been raised to 20%. There's this whole huge hope that maybe now you will, uh, a lot of developers who, who have projects which are delayed will get money. But I can only see Unitech which has a portfolio with commercial assets which probably to some extent can be bundled and that's also not a very big portfolio. But for others, do you think that there'll be any other benefits? Oh, I think that's a very relevant question and uh, you framed it quite accurately, Manisha. So while, you know, there could be a general euphoria that suddenly a lot of developers or a lot of investors will have uh, something to encash, I don't think that is the reality. Uh, maybe not just one Unitech as you named, there could be uh, more than half a dozen who I believe could get ready in quick time, which is, you know, about a year, year and a half from now. 
it's uh, it's uh, i don't think it's very accurate to name them right now but i definitely see a possibility where seven or eight of those could get ready who have uh, the the properties under construction as well as ready assets ready to be bundled together uh, from our own interactions we have figured that there are so there could be seven or eight definitely to start with some of them are in uh, much advanced in the whole curve but i think there are seven or eight uh, one more thing you know uh, while this 20 percent could actually be a little bit of uh, euphoric thing uh, it has to be treated with a little bit of caution uh, not everybody is going to be able to put all 20 percent it in any case it says up to 20 percent so anywhere between 10 15 20 18 could be done it depends on how you have structured your REIT, depending on how you are structuring your other transactions in the whole REIT. Well, looking at the fact that PE funds have got suddenly so excited and they're able to get such high returns out of investments in under construction projects because the industry is so starved of funds at this moment, I would assume that most people would meet their 20% cap. Madhav, I could be completely wrong and off the mark here, but I think that's where that's where the real honey is in, in the real estate sector. All right, just, just now look at the REIT scenario for us and tell me, uh, do you think now 12 months is a, is a good time period for us? to see the first REIT listing yeah, I would, I, I would, I would agree with that, Manisha. I think 12 months is a good time to, to look at the first uh, REIT listing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are at least a few players in the market who already started working towards that. Uh, so we've still not seen anybody press the button by uh, registering with SEBI. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are players who are definitely looking at considering options and trying to get their structure ready so that they can migrate to a REIT. Okay. So 12 months is something that we should see the first announcement. So DLF, happen. MBC... I wouldn't all want to these, take a guess okay, with none the names. Of them, no, nobody wants to take names here, but all right. Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, Arvind, any, any word of caution in terms of uh, the, it literally seems like, you know, um, SEBI is very, very clear and the longest serving director, I believe, Prashant Saran, this is his last change that he's brought about and very, very progressive gentleman, as I know of. So, uh, this, they're very keen, the signals is that they're very keen for REITs to take off in India. That's, that's at least what we can make of this, right? Yes, Manisha. Um, I don't think, you know, uh, caution, but I would, um, I would actually say, look at the picture as a whole, not at one part. So, REIT or REIT regulation could be one part, but I think there are three or four very critical things happening together, which are going to impact real estate sector straight away. So, REIT is one, you know. Uh, the other thing is we are all waiting for GST in this monsoon session, hopefully, to go through. Uh, real estate regulation, we are very hopeful that, you know, the, now the regulators will get in place for different states. Put all these three together and there is something that has emerged only today, which is the opening of FDI in certain sectors which are absolutely critical to real estate development, commercial side as well as others. So if I, I actually want to paint the picture not in pieces but take the whole canvas in, in one place and look at the whole thing, I think uh, REITs will definitely play a great part in enhancing uh, the real estate development scenario of India or investment scenario. But I think if you look at the whole thing, then you have a clearer, clearer path ahead in front of you. Okay. And nobody has, in fact, uh, spoke about it, but, but a new governor could be far more aggressive on the interest rate scenario of bringing down, which of course might be the biggest boost that the industry could get. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much, Arvind, also for putting everything together for us. Yes, the FDI norms which have been relaxed today also will bring in a large, large amount of investments, which means more commercial assets needed and a big push to commercial. Remember, every I, I don't know the formula, but there is a certain formula which says if you create a certain square foot of office space, then you actually have a multiple of residential demand coming up.